there's not anything, it will be. Good evening. Hi, Roger. <laughs> Are you ready to worship the Lord? Amen. Let's stand together.
breakthrough is coming by faith. I see a miracle. My God made me a promise and it won't stop now. I know breakthrough is coming. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let this place erupt with praise. Yeah. 
Place erupts with praise. Can you 
change everything lives heal hope found here now Jesus you change everything change fall fear bow here now Jesus you change Make time for a holy hush in your lives. It is good to stop all the busyness and hear that still, small voice. For it's then that you'll hear my direction and my voice so you'll know which way to turn and what to do. I keep telling you to look to me, but also listen to me. Make time in your lives. Set aside time to listen to me and what I'm telling you. 
I'll be telling all of you the same thing. You'll know it's me because it'll line up with my word that I've already said. And I will give you step by step what you're to do. And you'll be able to walk with me and even run with me. Because in these last days, I'm going to have to move quick. I need you to take my hand. I need you to listen to me. And I need you to not just be a hearer, but a doer. I need you to run with me. Because we're getting ready to do some great things. And bring glory to my name. God good. Tonight we have a very special night. Brother Merle is going to come and he's going to sing. Uh, you know, and he's not going to like it, but I'm going to brag on him. He's just got one of those great voices. It's just so clean. And I just love to hear him sing. And he goes way back. I shouldn't say that, should I, Merle? But reminds me of a kid when I was growing up, and I just appreciate him, and I, I'm looking forward to this. Come on, Merle. Pastor, I know, although your parents are still with you, I know that there's a lot of things, a lot of memories are just precious to you, but I only want to share one tonight about my mama, and uh, it's this photo, and speaking of how far back I go, uh, this was hanging by her living room door, old wood door with the only key was a skeleton key. If, if, of course, I know you don't know what that is, but anyway, <laughs> might as well not lock it. <laughs> Wouldn't do any good nowadays. But that old picture, 1942, and I was born 49, but I don't ever not remember it being there. But to my mama, um, it, was, it was a witness for her. And she, she wasn't afraid to, to testify. I was a hurry as quick as I can, Pastor. She wasn't afraid to testify, tell you about Jesus. But she just had her own ways of doing it, you know. And I was hanging right by her front door. So if you come in her house, which... A lot of people did back in the day to eat and this and that. You know, we always had preachers over and fried chicken, and that used to go together, you know. Uh, anyways, as you was leaving, you look up and see that picture, and you only have one of two comments to choose from. One of them, if you was a Christian, you'd... You'd look up 
and you rejoice. And my mom would rejoice with you because she'd shuffle them little feet when she was dancing, but she was always dancing backwards. You know, never forget that. I know Mark won't either. Never forget that. She's always dancing backwards. And had you been to my mom's, you looked up by the front door and you seen that picture of the rapture and you said, what's that? It's, they didn't have that back then, but if it was today, my mom would be saying, cha-ching, you know, because there she go. She'd light into you. She'd tell you what that picture is and what it means. And uh, I just, I'll never forget it. And uh, every time, uh, every time I go by a graveyard, this sounds stupid and it is silly, but every time I go by a graveyard, I look over, you know, like out there by Whirlpool or anywhere, you know. I look over to see if any of them's open or anybody's left yet because I know the Bible says that they're going before I do. And I'm just hoping that it started, you know. Anyway, that's what this song is about. And, uh, you know, the, the people have said... Sent way before 1942, the scoffers are said, where's the sign of he's coming? We've heard that since our youth. Well, there ain't too many scoffers anymore because people don't even, they don't get to hear the truth like we do. They don't even know what the rapture is, you know. But uh, that's what this song's about. Just pray for me. I hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind And you know it's closer, much closer now Closer than it's ever, ever been And I can almost hear the trumpet Gabriel sounds the call at the midnight cry. We'll be going home when Jesus steps out on the clouds, call his children. Dead in Christ will rise Meet him in the air Then those that remain Will be quickly changed At the midnight cry When Jesus comes again I look around And I see prophecies fulfilling And you know the signs of the time they're appearing everywhere I can almost hear the father as he says son go get your children at the midnight cry Bride of Christ will rise. Jesus steps on 
on a cloud that belongs to When Jesus comes again, and those that remain will be quickly changed at the midnight cry. When Jesus comes again. At the midnight cry, when Jesus comes again. almost midnight. Can you put that picture back up there? You know, I was looking real close at this earlier, and I noticed some of you up there, but I didn't recognize that some of you, uh, never mind. You know, I got a longing to go. I'm, I'm ready here than I've ever been to hear that trumpet. But I'm telling you, I live in a world that's not. It's time to get it done. And I believe that God's given us time. And I, I was, uh, received a challenging phone call today. I want to explain something to you. You see, I'm not of this world, but I'm in this world. And there's a difference. Because I'm in this world, I experience some worldly things, okay? About two weeks ago, my thumb got in between my hammer and a concrete floor. It bled. Because me being in this world, I'm subject to Jesus wasn't from this world. But he came to this world and was in this world. And when it came time to pay taxes, he said, boys, go catch some fish and reach in their mouths because we're going to pay taxes because we're in this world. He said, I'm subject to worldly things. He experienced an awful beating and was crucified by the world. He was subject and judged and put to death by the world. It was a painful death. He was subject to pain. And so for us to take the position that we're too good because we're God's people, 
that we can't suffer things of this world is a mistake. Okay? Now I'm going to tell you the other side of that. I got faith out of this world. And I might be subject to the things of the world. But when the world and the enemy attack me, I know where to go. And there is a big difference between that line that I just, and you got to be careful. Okay? You got to watch because this world is out to get us. And the ruler of this world would love But God's got a plan, and I'm going to tell you that his plan wins. His plans, there's going to be great drawing of people to him. And this whole thing is, is, is part of it. So just hang on and write it out. It's going to be okay, and we're going to make it. And we win. You know, there's a lot of people shouting, when Jesus was hanging on that cross, a lot of earthly people shouting and excited. The devil was jumping up and down just like he is now, but God's got an ultimate plan that changes everything. Now, since this is the cream of the crop tonight, the comebackers, Can I tell you things are liable to get worse before they get better? In worldly eyes. And it's okay because we're going to make it through. Come on. There's more to come probably. Probably can't, probably shouldn't use the word probably. There's more to come because people aren't waking up, even God's people. But man, for the ones that will just hold on and continue to look up and say, you know, God, I'll ride with you. I'll go where you want me to go. I'll do what you want me to do. It's going to get fun wrapping this thing up. Amen? You know, I was thinking today about the blood of Jesus, and I thought back to... And Jesus was preparing to die. And he's sitting at that table with the disciples. And he holds up a cup and he explains, this is my blood. It's a new covenant. And it is sufficient. You think about that. When he said it is sufficient, he meant it is sufficient for all things. He was thinking about me and you, Ed, being here during this time of chaos, of virus, of racism. And he was saying, you know what? My blood is su sufficient for that time. He was thinking about Brother Dennis laying at home in pain and suffering with Parkinson's. And he said, Brother Dennis, my blood is sufficient He's thinking about our friends and loved ones that are trapped by addictions, drugs, alcohol, pornography. And he said, hang on, sweetie. My blood is sufficient. He's thinking about all those that are having financial struggles. And he said, my blood is sufficient. Sufficient. And if we can just hold on to that and say, you know what, God? I know that you need to wake people up. I know things are liable to get worse before they get better. But I know that you promised that you're going to draw your people back. And I know that your blood is sufficient to sustain me through this time. I will follow you. Now listen, he said, disciples, the old covenant and the new covenant were both blood covenants. 
But the difference was with the old covenant that the blood was never sufficient enough, and so therefore, they always had to go back and kill something else. And it was always another, and another, and another, and another, because the blood wasn't sufficient. But he said, this time, it's the perfect sacrifice. The sacrifice is good enough. And so the blood will always be sufficient. Amen. And by that selfless act, that blood covenant he made, he offered me redemption of my sins. I mean, I'm looking around at this crowd and thinking, there's some bad people in here. No, wait a minute. There used to be. Think about, think about our past. Think about the things that we've done. Think about in God's eyes the disobedience. How many parents? Come on. When your kids don't listen, when they don't do as instructed, when they're disobedience, doesn't it just... Mm -hmm. You imagine how God thinks sometimes? But the blood was enough to cover all of my sins and your sins and Alan's sins and everybody's sins. And it will always be enough. He paid for my atonement. You see, because of sin, there was a problem between mankind and God. And he took care of it, and he broke the barrier, and he built a bridge across and said, it's okay for you to cross the bridge now. God can accept you now. He can hear you now. Because of the blood, let's just look. Let's, let me just share some scripture here before I get too far. Galatians 3 and 13. But Christ has rescued us from the curse pronounced by the law. When he was hung on the cross, he took upon himself the curse of our wrongdoing. For it is written in the scriptures, curses everyone who hung on the tree. See, the law was hard. And I'm glad I didn't live in that time because you could never be good enough. You could never be pure enough. You could ever, never be holy enough. You could never be obedient enough. And by us living in the new covenant, we shouldn't have to worry about that. But the problem is, we do. You see, instead of me going to God... And saying, God, what is it that you don't like about me? What is it that I need to change? What is it that I need to work on? We do it like this. Well, Roger does this, this, and this. And Ed does this, this, and this. And we begin to compare and look at others and say, you know, I'm really not all that bad. God don't need you to be all that bad. God wants to change you and mold you and make you what he created you to be because he created you with a purpose and a work to do 
that he needs fulfilled so this thing can wrap up. And so he took that away, but we keep running back to it and saying, you know what, God, I do this and I do this and I do this and I do this and I do this for you all the time. Isn't that enough? You want more? No, it's not more I want. I want your obedience. I want you to do what I've told you to do. I want you to daily seek after me and get instructions. I want to be able to give you a word on Friday at work during lunchtime so that you can take it to pastor on Sunday and he can share it with the church. I want you to be that obedient. And he made the sacrifice. So don't go back there. It's not about what somebody else is doing for God. It's about what I'm doing. You know, I have an older sister, much older. And I have a younger brother, not much younger. But as we were going up, you know, there were things that dad expected out of me that he didn't expect out of my little brother. Come on. But he didn't do it. Who cares? But she didn't do it. Who cares? I put the responsibility on you. And when you get to heaven and stand before God, if all you got is, well, I did more than Herb did. I did more than John did. It ain't going to be a fun place for you for a while. Thank God you made it. But I don't want to be there. The law showed... imperfections but the new covenant eliminated the imperfections it took them away when I've asked forgiveness I'm clean I'm white as snow I think there's a song like that and we need to begin to live that way we need to get things right with God on a regular basis, we need to make sure that we're there. Come on. And then we need to say, you know what? I'm not in bondage of my imperfections, my faults, my sins of the past anymore. So I don't have to cower down. I can stand up and be bold for God. The world might point them out, but it doesn't matter. I'm clean for the one that I'm serving, and it's good enough. The blood that was sacrificed before had to keep, they had to keep giving because it didn't cover all the sin. And so as there's more sin, there was more sacrifice. But in the new covenant, the blood covered the sin. The sin that had already been committed, the sin that was going to happen 2,000 plus years was covered. It was taken care of. Romans 8 and 15 so you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now I can claim him as Abba, Father. You know, I made a lot of mistakes in my life. But because my father, father loved me, he just said, it's going to be all right. We're going to get through this. We're going to move on. Let's put it behind us. Come on. And God's saying... Don't let that drag you down. I need you to be ready.
First Peter 1 Peter 1.19. But with the priceless blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spots. Hebrews 10, 16, 17, 18, 19. This is covenant that I will make with you. After, the, after those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. In their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of this is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiness by the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm good with God tonight. Come on. I'm good with God. If I need to boldly go before him, come on. If I get a call in the middle of the night and it's a crisis situation, I can wake up and say, you know what? I'm going to go to the throne and it's going to be okay because Jesus made it okay. The blood has power to transform. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from the dead works to serve a living God? 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things are new. Isaiah 1 and 18. Come now. And let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. When we accepted Christ, just like that, we became new. The old was forgotten. You know, my grandpa was a unique person. He farmed and worked in the oil fields, and he had more patience than anybody I know. And uh, as kids, he liked to teach you things, but his way of teaching was allowing you to make mistakes. My sister drove his brand new car into a mailbox and took the top off of it just about. I plowed a road one time. And when you told Grandpa it went something like this, do you know what you, knew you did wrong? And if you didn't, he explained it to you. This is what you should have done. You should have went into that field at a little more angle. And you wouldn't have had that dip. And you know, I often thought, why well, didn't he tell me before that? But he probably did. But you know what? I never did it again. Not because he didn't let me back in the tractor. Because God's the same way. He's not going to keep bringing up your past. Come on. He's not going to keep going back there. You're a new creature. Think about that. And it's always been that way. He's on that cross. And that thief that he's getting ready to die with says, I accept you. Forgive me. And he said, okay. In all his pain, and all his suffering, he said, okay, you know what? The best of the best that this world has to offer. If they'll humble themselves and cry out to him, he'll forgive them. Come on, the worst of the worst, it don't matter how bad they are. He's ready to accept them. blood transforms. The blood has the power to give life. John 10, 10, the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I come that you might have life and that might have it more abundantly. 
You know, thought about that a little bit. For this body to work right, for me to live, there's got to be blood flowing through those veins. You can't survive without blood. Christ said, I'm dying. I'm shedding my blood. I'm making this blood covenant with you so that you can live. Not just any blood. The perfect sacrifice. The one that never did anything wrong. That's the blood that has been given us tonight. Not just so that we could live, but we could have good life, abundant life. And it's time the church said, you know what? The world needs to see me living abundantly. Not just getting by. They need to be drawn to it. We need to be a place of hope. I thank God that through this time, in the last several months, we've given away thousands of dollars worth of food. Come on. And to the fact that they're hardly coming anymore because we gave them so much, they don't got room for it anymore. And we just didn't give stuff. We gave away good stuff. Even toilet paper once in a while. Hams. I was planning on keeping one of them hams and Roger gave it away. Milk. Bread. Because of your faithfulness and God blessing us, we were able through the abundance to help others. And you know what? It touched hearts. It got a hold of, of people. And we'll see We'll see that seed grow because of our abundance. And God will allow his people to have abundance as long as they're willing to give and help others. Revelations 21 and 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the murderers and the wrong and the, the whoremongers and the Sorcerers and the idolaters and the liars shall I have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is a second death. You know, given the two choices, Sister Linda, I don't get some people. Listen, that's really going to happen. And if you look at that picture close enough, there's some folks going to heaven. There's some cars that have wrecked. But there's some people looking up and wondering what's going on. And they're not leaving this world. And eventually, they're going to find hell to be their permanent home. And God's saying, Come on, church, wake up. Come on. I've already paid the price. The blood has been shed. Get busy. His blood has the power to heal and protect. You know, when a virus attacks the body, makes us sick, our blood begins to fight the virus to protect us, to heal us. When the enemy of our soul revolts against us, the blood that was shed, the covenant that was given, covers us like a shield and protects us from the enemy. It's what it was for. When your body suffers injury, a cut, a smash. Your blood does a wonderful thing. It protects you from infection. It forms a scab that protects you from getting infected.
Many times in life we live, we suffer different kinds of attacks upon our spirit. Something that somebody said that just cuts us like a knife, a selfish act that somebody does against us, attacked a Satan. But I'm telling you, don't get down. Look up because the covenant, the blood was shed. It was enough, and it'll take us through. The blood protects, and it still heals today. His blood has the power to deliver. You know, the power of the blood breaks the yoke of bondage. Stand fast, Galatians 5, 1, stand fast, therefore, in liberty, wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. You know, whatever Satan throws that at you, whatever he wraps up, whatever family member he gets a hold of, plead the blood. The blood will break the bondage. I'm reminded of one of them way back songs. There's power in the blood. I just want to share some words from that song with you today. Would you be free from the burden of sin? You see, that song says, would you? That was a question. Would you be free? Do you want to be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood. Would you over evil of victory win? Come on. How many like to whip the Satan every time he comes at you? The song says, there's power in the blood. Would you be free from the passion and pride? There's always got to be a second verse. Not as good as the first one. Would you be willing to say, I'm going to put myself aside. I'm going to focus on God. It's not all about me. There's power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. Get this. Sometimes I come in this room because it's a good place for me. And I come to that altar and I kneel down and I say, God, I don't know what's going on. Just clean me up. I just need a cleansing by the blood. I don't know what's out of sort. I don't know that I've really done anything wrong. I don't know that I'm a bad person, but something isn't right. Just cleanse me by the blood. Would you be whiter, much whiter than snow? There's power in the blood. Sin stains, sin stains are lost in his life-giving flow. There's power. In the blood. Sin stains are lost in the blood. Would you do service for Jesus the King? Oh, I'd like to, but I'm kind of like Moses. I don't talk very good. I don't know why he didn't give me an errand, but hey, I'll just go with it. There's power in the blood. I've already paid for it. Just get out there and do it. It'll be okay. Would you leave, live daily? His praises to sing. Such a time like this. Wouldn't it be good if I could just live daily in his praises? Wouldn't it be great if I just could always have a song? If I could always have a shout, if I could say, you know what? I'm not going to get caught up in it all. I'm just going to praise Jesus. He said you can because there's power in the blood. Yeah. 
There's power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There's power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Church, it's not a time to hang our heads. It's not a time to quit. It's the time to say, you know what? I'm thankful for the blood tonight. It's all good. I'm going to preach like I've never preached before. I'm going to praise like I've never praised before. I'm going to witness like I've never witnessed before. Because of the blood. I'm going to live like I've never lived before, abundantly. So today, all day, God just wanted me to remind you that the ultimate sacrifice has already been given. It's all been paid for. He's not surprised by anything that's going on. He's like, I got this. But he's not afraid to rattle a world, not not afraid to shake a country up and say, you know what? It is time to turn back to me. Now you get this. I've been reading, I've been actually listening to the Old Testament every day. And when I look at them and I look at us, I think they weren't all that bad. God's grown more patient. We took God out of schools and places, government places, long before we took Robert E. Lee. Come on. We were a country founded so that we could worship God. But we can't pray in public. We have moments of silence. God burned whole cities. Because men were having sex with men. Completely destroyed them. And we got people today that think they can take the word of God and make it okay. You're wrong. We kill babies. And say everyone ought to have a choice. This country's in bad shape. Because I could keep going. Drugs and alcohol, pornography. I mean, honestly, if you look at us today and you read the stories where he wiped it out and said, we're going to do this again. If something doesn't change, he's going to keep letting things happen. But at the same time, he's going to expect the church to stand large. He's going to expect us to be a house of hope. You see, I'm not willing to get in a fight or a debate over the government has a right to wear, make me wear a mask or not because it's not that big of a deal to me. But I'm not so sure that time's not coming in my lifetime where they might say, you can't have church. No more word of God. Come on. 
There are those out there right now that are going to be running for an election in November that would love to make that happen. And I'm saving my energy, folks. I'm saving my fight for a real fight. And I'm not going to let the devil trap me and get me into petty stuff because there's bigger things coming if we don't turn around now. And it's got to start right here in the good old Pentecostal churches. People got to get excited about God. We got to praise like we've never praised before. We got to know the word. We got to understand the promises like we've never understood them before. We got to be ready to plead the blood on every situation. We got to be ready to look out for one another because that's what family does. You see, I don't quite know how I'm going to live abundantly if all hell breaks loose on earth, but I'm going to. And I'm believing that God's going to do greater things than he's done before because Jesus promised it. I played a lot of sports. Basketball was my favorite. I worked hard in practice so that I could start. I tried to control my fouls so I could finish. But if you told me I could only start or finish, I would rather finish. You know why? I couldn't handle being on the bench if the game was close and not being able to do something about it so that we could win. I think God gave me that mentality, and he said, I put you here to be a finisher. Wake up, church. There's a work to do, and the devil can't stop it. Amen? There's power in the blood. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you that you love me so much. You loved us so much that you sent your son to be the perfect sacrifice. That he died on the cross and shed his blood, sealed the covenant, made the promises yes and amen. God, I thank you that you're not surprised by anything that's going on today that there's nothing that the devil can throw at us that through the blood that we can't have victory over. God, I'm thankful that you call us to be finishers. And I ask that you raise up a church that prays like they've never prayed before, that studies your word and knows it. So when they need it and the enemy attacks, they can use it against him. God, that they know every promise. So they walk into a situation and they say, oh, right here. God made this promise. It's yours today. It's been sealed by the blood. Just claim it. And God, I thank you that the blood made me good enough to approach the throne. Anytime. God, I thank you that my past is behind me, that it's not being brought back up, that I can move on, that I don't have to live in that bondage. I've been set free by the blood. God, I thank you for the revival that you're sending. God, I thank you for what you're getting ready to do. God, I thank you for the souls that are going to be saved. God, I thank you for those that are going to be set free from bondages, those that are going to be healed, God. And it's all going to bring glory to you and cause the kingdom to grow. God, and I thank you soon and very soon. That song that we heard tonight is going to be a reality, that that trumpet is going to blow. 
in the blood is going to be sufficient enough for me to stand before you and hear well done. And God, I thank you. I thank you for allowing me to be here now. But I ask you, move me and use me like I've never been used before. Use this church. And God, use us in a mighty way in these last days. Amen. Love y'all. I can't wait till we get to meet again.